How to treat Sergeant Thomas and thousands of soldiers like him has become a top priority for behavioral scientists. And this is the cutting edge. Perhaps the most promising new treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder is virtual reality therapy. Now, typically this is done in stereo, so you work Dr. Anthony Skip Rizzo is a research scientist at the University of Southern California. Its Institute for Creative Technologies is in the forefront of developing virtual reality, or VR, therapy for our troops. The idea was that if we can put somebody back in a combat environment, that eventually the person will deal with the emotional memories that have been perhaps suppressed or that are causing them problems. There are sets designed to mimic war-scarred Iraq. Copters roar overhead. Burning vehicles litter the streets. This certainly gives you a sense of being there. Even any correspondent who's been to Iraq and been out of it all has seen this scene. Dr. Rizzo hopes this will reach and help soldiers who are uncomfortable seeing a therapist for psychological problems. It takes the onus off of the deep interpersonal component of therapy. The clinician is still using all the typical things that they would do in therapy, but they've got the centerpiece that attracts a person in a way that might not be possible with traditional therapy. He based his virtual Iraq on Virtual Warrior. That's a reality program the Army developed to train soldiers headed for combat. When I first saw it, I said, wow, they have a graphic environment that looks like Iraq or Afghanistan. Why not take that already existing environment, modify it to our needs, and build a treatment tool for PTSD? Well, question. Since you're recreating so vividly the very scenes that have caused the soldier to have post-traumatic stress disorder, there's some risk of making his situation worse because he has to relive it and keep on reliving it. I think the issue of worrying about whether you're going to traumatize the patient further is a legitimate concern. And this is why in the hands of a good clinician, you do it in a very managed and progressive fashion. So you don't push somebody over their limit. These full-scale mock-ups are used for training purposes. For now, VR therapy sessions utilize a head monitor display. Dr. Rizzo fitted me out. It looks straight ahead. Okay. Straight ahead. Now, now you're looking out the window and you can turn your head any way you want. Amazing. And before long, I was riding down a highway in Iraq in a Humvee. If you look up in the air, you'll see a helicopter. I may have been driving the Humvee, but it was Dr. Rizzo who controlled the level of stress. In the course of your driving, I'll ramp it up and then all hell will start to break loose okay. over time. Where did these guys come from? He could decide when to launch a mortar round or set off an IED. Now I'll start to add more things. Each time a bomb went off, my chair would shake. Well, we've taken three more bullet holes through our windshield, Captain. When working with patients, the therapist monitors heart rate and respiration. We don't have to worry about whether they really are imagining the scenes in graphic detail. We can deliver the scenes in a very clear way so we know what they're seeing and what they're experiencing. Dr. Rizzo's program is now being tested at Camp Pendleton and several VA centers around the country. Well, key question, does it work? Well, we've just started our clinical trials over the last three months, so I don't know what the actual end status is of the people that are in therapy now, but the people are reporting a drop in their symptomology over the progression of, of the treatment, and they enjoy it. They want to come to therapy. That's a, a big difference. 